and off we go. And here and there. All right. So, guys, today what we're going to do is actually something that you learned in eighth and ninth grade science classes. Well, actually, eighth grade science class. And I know that because my kids have come up through the uh, the Alpine School District system. And eighth grade science is actually kind of it's unified across all of the junior highs. And so, guys, for some of you, you're going to go. Wait a minute. I remember this. Um, interestingly. My daughter came back and took general chemistry with me. You know my kids are at Timpanogos. Um, but my daughter, her whole life plan, um, she and a good friend of hers was to come and do chem with me, and they did. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, we remember doing this. Um, so, guys, for some of you, you're going to look at this and go, yeah, I kind of remember this. Um, for those of you that don't, I think you're going to find it pretty darn straightforward. Um, but, guys, we're starting a unit now, and this is amazing. We only have two units left this year. Let that soak in. Guys, we only have two units left for the entire year. Guys, the unit that we're starting today is all about doing reactions. This is this whole unit is about the study of reactions. So the way that this is going to go is today you're going to learn about what are called equations. Equations represent reactions. Then guys on Friday we're going to learn how to predict the products of reactions and then when we get back after spring break we're in lab a bunch. We're analyzing data that comes out of the reactions that we do and actually Actually, it's really interesting. But guys, at the end of the day today, all of this is skill-based. There are no concepts. It's all skills. So guys, I've given you your notes. The vast majority of it is fill in the blank. Guys, there is one additional idea that you're going to want to scratch in your notes. I'll lead you to it. But guys, let me set the foundation for what we're doing. And it goes like this. Guys, when we study, you don't need to write this down. Guys, when when we study chemical reactions, we represent those reactions using what are called chemical equations. And guys, chemical equations always have two sides. If you don't think you can remember this, you're welcome to write it down up above there. But there's another thing that's going to go in this space. But guys, the way that we set up chemical, chemical equations is we have a reactant side. That's the stuff that goes in. And then we have a product side, produced. That's the stuff that comes out. And then, guys, we have an arrow that shows direction. So reactants turn into products, but instead of turns into, we say the word yields. Now, guys, one little tricky bit that you need to keep track of, we could technically put the products on the left and the reactants on the right. The only difference is, is the arrow will flip. We do that sometimes in AP. Um, but, guys, the bottom line is the arrow always points at products. Not bad, right? You guys all okay? Okay. So guys, with that said, this you do need to write down. This is something that you need to keep track of. And guys, these are called diatomic molecules. This is worth writing down. So guys, in that space where you've got that little narrow margin at the top of your notes, this you need to write down. So if you read the word diatomic, I know that you can tear this apart and you know atomic is atoms and di means too. So guys, when we talk about diatomic molecules, we're talking about molecules, don't write this down, we're talking about molecules that are composed of two atoms. So guys, this is the deal. There are seven elements on the periodic table that are so bloody stinking reactive that if they don't have something else to react with, they react with each other and they stick together in packets of two. But guys, there's seven of them. So look at your periodic table with me and do this. Put your finger on iodine. Then guys, do this. Go up until you can't anymore. Then go left until you run out of red. And then jump over to the last red guy, which is hydrogen. Guys, those are all the diatomics. You don't have to memorize them. Hi. Next time you do that, rather than him, come to me first, would you? 
Thank you. All right, so guys, it goes like this. You start at iodine, and you go up until you can't. You go left until you run out of red, and then hydrogen. And guys, those are the diatomics. If you don't understand the pattern, you might want to write them down. Guys, it goes I2, Br2, Cl2, F2, O2, N2, H2. Guys, those elements are so reactive that if they're by themselves, they'll react with each other other, you will never find them alone. So if you need to write them down, great. I can make them bigger. Um, but guys, you just need to remember those seven. You might even, if it's easier, rather than write them down, you could just jot notes about the pattern. Start at iodine, go up, go left, out of red, go to the last red, you're done. <clears throat> and since you always have your periodic tables with you, you never have to memorize it. Again, guys, it's all about doing today. It's, it's process, it's skills, it's not conceptual. So you just got to remember these dudes. You guys okay there? Okay, so now, gang, there's a whole lot of information that's going to be coming at you um, relatively quickly. Just trust me. Don't write any of this down. Eventually, it's going to land in the uh, notes that are on your screen. But guys, just trust me for this right now. So guys, you remember the law of conservation of mass? Matter is never created or destroyed, right? So guys, when we balance chemical equations, what we're actually doing is we're supporting the law of conservation of mass. Everything that goes in has got to come out. Everything that goes out has got to come in. We don't make or destroy matter. And as a result, we have to balance equations. When we do that, it makes sense. The number of atoms that goes in has got to exactly match the number of atoms that comes out, because if it doesn't, we busted the law of conservation of mass. So in order to do this, here's the steps. Don't write this down. So guys, the steps for balancing chemical equations are these. The first thing that you do is you identify the reactants and products. Guys, we're not going to do that until Friday. It is the first step, but I'm going to do this for you today. Then, guys, step number two is you write the chemical formulas for the reactants and products. That was two units ago. Remember the one-page test we took when you were writing formulas? That's going to be important. But, guys, we're going to do that later. When we do, you balance them by charges, but you don't balance the equation. That's the last thing we're going to do today. So, guys, today, first, what we're going to do is balance these equations using coefficients. Now grab your notes because this is the stuff that you're going to write down. So guys, as we do this, I have got what I call helpful hints. See that in your notes? Guys, these are, the, are there five? These are the five hints that I learned in college that makes this a lot easier. And guys, let me just say this to you now. When you get to college, you are going to find professors that make this way harder than it needs to be. I've had some of my students go and ask their college like friends or siblings how to do these and they come back so screwed up because these professors are teaching them these methods that are way harder than they have to be. So guys, these always work. And it goes like this. Number one, and these will mean nothing to you until we play with them. Guys, number one, balance polyatomic ions intact if you can. Means nothing to you, but it will. So guys, hint number one, balance polyatomics intact if you can. Number two, if you get an odd even conflict, Double the odd numbered atom. Again, means nothing to you, but it will. Number three. Guys, always balance the oxygens last. If you start balancing these and you start with oxygen, you're going to dig yourself a pit. Guys, wait for oxygens last. It'll make your life so much easier. Number four, when all else fails, trial and error. 
Guys, you can balance all of these by trial and error, but as a last resort, if you're totally stuck, guys, just muscle these with trial and error. And again, I know it means nothing to you, but it will. And then guys, finally, you got to work in pencil. You are going to be erasing so much that if you do this in pen and you're scribbling things out, you're just going to end up making such a mess. You have no idea what's going on. Holy smokes, y'all. <laughs> this is going so fast. Are you guys okay with the ideas? So products yield, reactants yield products, diatomics. And now, guys, all we need to do is um, balance some equations so that you have a sense of what this looks like. And then, guys, at that point, we're going to do one last thing at the bottom of your notes. And then, guys, we are done for the day. So we're definitely going to get your test back to you today. So guys, here's what we're going to do. Um, drop whatever you're writing with. And guys, play along at home. So here's what we know. Equations represent reactions. But when we have these equations properly written, everything that goes in has got to come out and vice versa. Good? Let me show you an example. So guys, this, and don't write this down. Guys, this is the chemical equation that we're going to balance to drive some of these ideas home. But guys, this is a chemical equation. But you'll notice that it's not balanced. It breaks the law of conservation of mass. How can that be? Well guys, how many carbons do we have going in? Three, coming out, one. Hydrogen's going in, eight, coming out, Two, um, where do we go? Oxygen's going in, two, coming out, three. So guys, this breaks the law of conservation of mass because we're creating and destroying matter. And we've got to fix that. But before we do, guys, remember the chemical equations represent reactions. And most of you in this room have done this chemical reaction. You guys know these, right? Carbon dioxide, water. Why is oxygen O2? Because it's diatomic, right? So guys, notice that when oxygen has something else to bond to, like hydrogen, it will. But when it's by itself, it's O2. So guys, where is O2 right now all around us? in the air. So we've got oxygen in the air, we've got carbon dioxide and water being produced. So guys, all we got to do is know what this is and we know the reaction. Any of you know what this is? So guys, this is the reaction that takes place every time you light your barbecue grill. Unless you're old school like me and you use charcoal, guys, this is propane. This is the reaction that cooks your burgers. You've got a big old tank of propane. You light the grill. It reacts with the oxygen in the air. But guys, look at the products. It makes carbon dioxide in water. Where does the carbon dioxide go when, you're, when your grill is going? Out into the air. Where does the water go? It can. And actually, I have a grill that's made of clay, and it actually does that. It traps the moisture, and it keeps the food moist. It's actually pretty cool. But guys, in a normal metal grill, where does the water go? It's hot in the grill. What happens to it? It boils and goes away. But guys, in a couple days, we'll be able to do the math. But let me just tell you how it plays out. We, we've done the math. And guys, if you burn a three-burner propane grill for half an hour, you make just short of a cup of water. Isn't that crazy? And then, guys, it all just goes away. It boils into the air. Um, have you guys ever looked to the west and seen that power plant down there and there's always like smoke coming out of it. Do you know the one I mean? It's on 1600 North um, by the Harley Davidson dealer, kind of a little further down than that. Guys, understand that that smoke that's coming out of that thing is not smoke. It's actually water vapor. It's all water vapor um, because they're doing a reaction very much like this. The carbon dioxide, of course, is a greenhouse gas, but what looks like smoke when you see that coming out of that plant, it's not. It's just water vapor. So anyway, with that said, guys, we've got 
to balance this. So let's drive home the idea that this isn't balanced by looking at this. So guys, the colors are a little bit wrong, but they have to be in order to show up against a blue background. So guys, gray or black is carbon, red is oxygen, but they had to switch hydrogen to blue rather than white because it wouldn't show up against the background. So guys, this is what a propane molecule looks like. This is diatomic oxygen, this is carbon dioxide, and this is water. So now guys, what we've got to do is we've got to balance this thing. So when we balance this thing, we've got three carbons going in, we've got to have three carbons going out. But guys, we can't do that by putting a three right there. Because if we put a three right there, it's no longer carbon dioxide. So guys, how do we get three carbons coming out if we can't just huck a three in the chemical formula? And guys, watch close. The answer is actually this. Instead of changing the formula of carbon dioxide, what we do is we put a three in front. Now we have three carbon dioxide molecules, so we've got three carbons going in and one, two, three carbons coming out. Do you see the distinction there? Let's keep going. So now guys, how many hydrogens do we have going in? Eight. How many do we have coming out? Two. So guys, what do we do in order to get eight hydrogens coming out? Talk to the person closest to you. What are we going to do? How are we going to get eight hydrogens coming out? So guys, what can't we do? We can't just change that to an eight because you know that's not water. So how do we get them coming out? Did you come up with it? Guys, four water molecules. And when we change this to four water molecules, you can now see that we've got two, four, six, eight hydrogens coming out. You getting the idea? One more to go. Guys, remember the rule, balance oxygens last. In this case, it came naturally because you always do these from left to right. So guys, we've got oxygens two going in. Be careful how many oxygens are coming out. So here we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But guys, over here we have one, two, three, four. So it's total oxygens coming out. So in total, we have 10 coming out. And so in order to have 10 going in, we need five water molecules. Or I'm sorry, five oxygen molecules. You guys okay? Does that sit all right? Guys, that's what we're doing. Here's the process. Start on the left, work to the right. As you encounter an atom, figure out how many are going in, how many are coming out, and then make them the same by adding coefficients. You guys okay? And let's do it. Guys, go down to the page that's beneath or the center part of your notes. Let me catch up with you. It looks like this. And guys, we're going to do these together. Now, not surprisingly, when Miss Call and I put this together, guys, there's so much a method to our madness. So guys, what you're going to find is that when we balance these, they follow the clues, the hints that we talked about. So guys, we're going to do these together. Then we're going to do one more example. And then guys, we're going to settle in. Well, we'll see. Maybe I'll just give you your test back first. We'll talk. All right. So guys, it goes like this. Follow along at home. And let me get a thicker writing utensil. And uh, guys, we're going to dig into this. All right. So guys, here's what you do. Start on the left, go to the right. So guys, how many coppers do we have on the left? One. Coppers on the right? Also one. Hydrogens on the left? Two. Hydrogens on the right? Two. Oxygens on the left? One. Oxygens on the right? 
One, this is balanced as written. Guys, the reason that I gave you this example is because you're going to have this desire to fill in the spaces by putting all ones. Guys, do not do that. In the same way that x plus y equals z, and you understand that there are understood ones in front of the x, y, and z, guys, do not put ones when they should be there because they're understood to be there. Is that okay? All right, now let's keep going. Guys, how many aluminums do we have on the left? Now be careful. Does this three apply to the aluminum? It does not. So guys, we have one aluminum there. We have one aluminum there. We're good to go. Now guys, look at hint number one. Number one. Balance polyatomics intact if you can. Guys, join me at the screen and let me explain to you what that means. So guys, here we have nitrogen and here we have oxygen. And we could balance the nitrogens and the oxygens individually. But guys, these nitrogens and oxygens together form nitrate, NO3. It's on your polyatomic ion sheet. So then the question is this. Nitrate is going in, but guys, no Notice that nitrate is also coming out. The NO3 stays together. So rather than balance the N's and the O's, balance the NO3's. So guys, watch. How many NO3's do we have on the left? Three. That's what the three means. But guys, over here we only have one. But guys, we can't do this because sodium is plus one and nitrates minus one, so you only need one of each. So how do we get three nitrates? Put a three in front. Now let's keep going. The next thing we run into is sodiums. How many sodiums on the left? One. Now be careful. Guys, how many sodium or yeah, how many sodiums are on the right? Three. So now we need a three here. Now we need to balance the O's and the H's. But guys, you may remember that OH is actually the polyatomic ion on your yellow sheet, hydroxide. So the question is, does it stay together? Well, we've got OH there and we've got OH there so we can balance the polyatomic. So guys, we've got three OH's here, we've got three OH's there, and oh my goodness, it balances. And guys, that is not a coincidence. It balances because this represents a reaction that actually does the chemistry properly. And guys, many times these just magically balance. Questions on the second one? You guys okay? Okay, let's keep going. So now guys, we're gonna do the next one and we've got potassium on the left. How many do we have? One. And on the right, we have one. Now this. Oh my goodness, we have NO3 again on the left. Can we balance the NO3s? You cannot, because guys, look. On the right, NO3 turns into NO2. Guys, that means we cannot balance the polyatomics. So now what we've got to do is we've got to balance the nitrogens. There's one on the left. How many on the right? Also one. Now watch this. Now we're going to balance the oxygens. How many oxygens do we have on the left? Three. How many do we have on the right? Look at the second hint. We now have an odd even conflict. We have an odd number of oxygens on the left. We have an even number of oxygens on the right. So what do we do? We go to the odd number and double it, and now it magically becomes even. But now, guys, we've got to start over. Because how many potassiums do we now have? Two, so we need a two here. Then, guys, nitrogens, we've got two, and we've got two. And then check this out. Oxygens, we now have six, but over here we have four, five, six oxygens, and now that's balanced. Huh? 
You should see the way they teach these in college. It's so, anyway, it's weird. All right. So guys, let's keep going. Questions on that one? Odd even conflict makes sense now? Now let's do this. So guys, uh, checking this one out, we've got iron on the left, we've got iron on the right, we have one on the left, how many do we have on the right? Two, so we just need to go like this. Now guys, check this out. We've got two hydrogens on the left, we've got two hydrogens on the right, so we're sitting pretty there. So now, gang, can we balance the SO4 or do we have to do hydrogen and sulfur? Does the SO4 stay intact? The sulfate. Well, we've got it there. We've also got it there so we can balance SO4s. So guys, on the left, how many SO4s? One. On the right, how many SO4s? Three. So we put a three there and now we're balanced. Yeah? No. And guys, this is something to look out for. We already balanced the irons and we already balanced the hydrogens, but the problem is, is that when we balanced the SO4s, we broke the other ones. So now we've got to start over. So two FEs, two FEs, we're still good. Here we've got six hydrogens now from balancing the SO4. We've got six hydrogens and over here we only have two. So we got to come back and put a three there and now it's balanced. So guys, it kind of becomes like a tennis match. Do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, and at the end make sure they all they all even out. You guys okay? Okay, we got one more to go, you guys. What is the besides use a pencil, what is the last rule? Hint. Oh, never mind. The last one. Wait, is the last one trial and error? Trial and error and work against Which is, <laughs> sorry, I forgot the order of the notes. What does it say? The yeah, oh, sorry. It's, so guys, we're, you won't run into trial and error until the homework tonight or today. Um, so guys, number three, balance the oxygens last. Sometimes, just to be evil, I let my students try to dig into this one and they forget balance oxygens last and it's a train wreck. So guys, join me. Balance the oxygens last. Go over here first. One carbon, one carbon, two sulfurs, one sulfur, so we need a two. Now guys, at that point, you can balance the oxygens and we've got two and four is six. So we need a three. So guys, here's the deal. When you start to work on these in a couple minutes in homework, um, guys, just being, these are harder than they look, some of them. Um, I'm good at the, I mean, I've been doing these for decades, right? I'm good at them. Um, don't be surprised if you sit down to these and you're like, oh, these are a little harder than I thought they would be. Guys, go back to the patterns. Start on the left, find your first element, balance it on the right, watch out for polyatomics. If you can balance those, it's easier. Guys, write big. You need to write these big and give yourself space to erase, give yourself space to organize, okay? So guys, questions on this process? We got one more to go. You ready? So guys, let me put this in context for you. My screen's gonna freak out, hold on. So it goes like this. Guys, this is where we are. What we just did is this. We just balanced equations by using coefficients. Now guys, we're gonna go up one more step in the ladder. And now guys, we're going to make this a little more complex, if you will. We're going to add in this step where we are first going to write the chemical formulas and then we're going to balance the equations. Then guys, on Friday we'll get into identifying reactants and products. But let me do one of these with you. My board isn't going to let me do this. But guys, let me do one of these with you to give you a sense. 
That's so weird to give you a sense of how these work. So, guys, I gave this to you at the bottom of your page. Um, for me, um, it's at the top of the screen. But, guys, we're going to do this together. Again, strategies are important. So it reads like this. Calcium metal reacts with copper to sulfate to produce calcium sulfate and copper metal. Guys, this is a chemical reaction. Cal uh, we're going to do this kind of next, well, after spring break. But instead of um, calcium metal, we're going to use zinc. Um, but we're going to do this reaction in lab next week. Um, but guys, what we've got to do is we've got to write the balanced equation. Here's how to approach this. Guys, the very first thing that you're going to do, go straight in the middle of your paper. <laughs> My poor board. Oh, it struggles. Um, so guys, what we're going to do is this. We're going to go right in the middle of your page and draw a yield zero. Guys, just trust me on this. It makes this so much easier. Draw a yield zero in the middle. And then guys, what you're going to do is you are going to read the sentence. And I know that story problems are one of the great struggles in all high school students' lives. Because you don't even have to read the sentence. All you've got to do is find the chemicals and then ask yourself two questions. What is it and where does it go relative to the arrow? So guys, grab your periodic tables, have those in view, and guys, uh-oh, I lost my sentence. I may have to redo this. Hold on. So I need to go here, and good heavens, and here. Now that doesn't work. So now we're going to go down here. All right. So again, guys, the drill is this. Find the chemicals. What are they? Where do they go? So guys, our first chemical is this, calcium metal. Find it on your periodic table. Element 20, is that right? Hey, look at me. So, guys, calcium metal. But now you're going, wait, this is calcium. But what does it mean, calcium metal? Well, guys, if you look at calcium on your periodic table, it's on the left. So what does that make it? A metal. So all we're talking about is calcium. Yeah, it's a metal, but you already knew that. So then the question is this. Does it go on the reactant or the product side? Well, guys, look what it says. Calcium metal reacts. That means it's a reactant. So which side does it go on? The left. Calcium plus. And then, guys, it goes on. Calcium reacts with. That's your plus. And then, guys, we've got copper one sulfate. That is also a reactant. How do we know? Because it's reacting with. But now we got to figure out what it is. So guys, this is reaching back a little bit, but do it with me. So guys, copper is Cu and its charge is plus one. How do I know? The Roman numeral. Then guys, sulfate. It ends in eight, which tells us it's going to be on here. So guys, find sulfate on your polyatomic ion chart. What is it? Find sulfate. SO4. But then, guys, its charge is minus 2. Guys, this should feel really familiar to you. Now, copper is plus 1, sulfate is minus 2. We need those charges to balance, so we need two coppers and one sulfate. So, guys, the chemical formula is Cu2SO4. Guys, give yourself some grace on this. If that doesn't come back immediately, it will. If it doesn't, please get the support that you need. Guys, everybody in this room either did really well on this test, the one-page test, or you did really well on remediation. So guys, you should it, it's in there. Let it come back, but it's in there. So now guys, we go along and we keep reading, and it says this. 
to produce calcium sulfate and copper metal. So now guys, we're talking about the products. So calcium, element number 20, is Ca, and its charge is plus two. We've already identified that sulfate is minus two. So guys, plus two and minus two, how many of each do we need? Just one of each. So guys, this is CaSO4. And then, gang, our other product is copper metal, which is just Cu, and we're done. So guys, the only thing that's different now is that we are writing the formulas for our reactants and products. But once we're done with this, we now need to balance it, and this is what we just looked at. So guys, it goes like this. One calcium on the left, how many calciums on the right? One, so we're good. Guys, how many coppers on the left? Two. We've got one on the right, so we need to put a two. Then, can we balance the SO4s? Do they stay intact? And they do. So guys, over here we have one SO4, and over here we have one SO4, and this is now balanced. So guys, these are a little trickier. Deep breaths, allow yourself the time and space. The only thing that makes these trickier is you need to remember how to write chemical formulas. So, guys, with that said, let me get you the homework. Um, let me get this in your hands. Guys, you know the drill. This is the entire homework packet. Um, we're going to talk about what we're going to do with this. And then we'll go from there. All right. Boom. So guys, this is the scoop on the homework. Um, this is only single-sided. So notice part one. Part one is what we started the day with, which is just balancing equations. But you guys, you'll notice the way that I wrote these. I wrote them with sufficient space so that you can balance these just right there on the paper, okay? Then, when you move down to numbers two and three, guys, these really should just be one big thing. Notice the instructions are the same. Substitute symbols and formulas for the names and then write the balanced equations. So two and three are exactly what's up on the screen right now. These guys, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? You're, you're adults, you can do whatever you want. Um, but guys, if you wanna do these well, do them on another sheet of paper. Um, you need space to organize and stay on top of this. Um, so guys, this will be due on Friday. It's the first homework for this next unit. On Friday, we're gonna take step number one, which is really step number three, which is identify the reactants and products. It's an interesting day. Then guys, when we get back from spring break, we're actually gonna do a lab where we do all the reactions that we're gonna talk about on Friday. Um, guys, if you're going to be gone on Friday, you already have the homework in front of you. The screencast will be posted. You'll be fine. Um, but here's what we're going to do. Um, we are going to work on the homework for about the next 18 minutes. And then, guys, with the last, you know, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes in class, I'll give you your test back. We'll do the test analysis then. But, guys, we're going to do, we're going to work on this now, and then we're going to regroup um, at the end of the day. So, guys, the time is yours. Give me a minute to print the answers to the homework for you, and uh, we'll go from there. Go get them.